Ave Satanas. Welcome to Sanctuary Satanica. I'm the daughter of Lilith. And before I get into sharing some tools I use in my practice, I want to say thank you to everyone who helped me reach 666 subscribers. It's pretty fucking awesome. Hail Satan. And thank you so much to Marie Ravensoul for giving my channel a little shout out. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who's giving me shout outs on TikTok and wherever else and subscribe to my channel. I really, really appreciate it. It's really fucking awesome. I've seen um, some people I really admire notice my channel and interact with it, and it's blown my mind, you know? Um, I still don't know what to make of social media, still. I, I don't think I'll ever be comfortable with it, but um, I'm here, despite having left for two weeks inexplicably. Anyways, um, I want to start by talking about my oils. I love using oils in my practice, uh, mainly for magical purposes, but lately they've been very important to my spiritual work as well. Um, and I mainly have been using deity oils that I have made myself. I have, this is, this, this bottle is almost empty, but I have more, um, this is my Lilith oil, and this is my oil, this is another new bottle of it that I made, um, this is my Satan oil, and I anoint my statues, um, religious jewelry, the candles and devotion, sometimes working candles, but these are devotional candles. Um, and also I anoint my veil with these oils. And this is something that um, I made from various herbs and ingredients that I attribute to that deity. So therefore it has a bit of their essence. It's easier to contact them when I have anointed things with these oils. So when I would wear my veil, I'll show you my veil. I don't wear my veil all the time. Um, I mainly wear it when I am doing, um, when I need more focus during prayer, I often kind of wear it loosely like this. And when I'm doing something kind of magical and intense, I tend to tie it um, kind of out of the way and firmly on my head. Um, Likewise, if I feel like I need that protection out and about, I tend to tie it on my head, though not always. Um, it happens to have bath me on it. It's really cool. But I would take the oils. I can just demonstrate right now. I have on my hand. I have particular deities I associate with particular hands. Um, or I anoint them on certain hands. Kind of doing the reverse right now. I don't know why, but whatever. And I kind of massage it onto my head. So it's a way of like anointing. Um, the crown chakra and my veil and myself at the same time. And it's also something that this is kind of like releasing some tension from my head to this massage movement. And I found that that would help me focus. Um, also the oils have a nice kind of smell that helps get me focused as well. So veil I don't I don't veil for modesty there's so many reasons why people would veil um, modesty is a very popular one again not what I'm doing um, veiling is not standard practice in anything satanic necessarily however there are other Satanists who do veil for various reasons um, I started veiling about 
I want to say four years ago um, with Lilith and that was about focus mainly but now I also veil for um, magical protection for um, just kind of keeping things together keeping my energy to myself sometimes um, and also just connection with deity just the act of getting ready with it and anointing myself with it is something that um, connects me and that's cool so yeah sometimes I just wear it around my neck um, for that same kind of thing without you know it on my head if that's what I want to do but I'm not super strict with it it's just a tool of mine it's not something I see as like a rule either way um, but yeah I also use prayer beads or meditation beads mala whatever you want to call them um, mine I strung up myself but it originally strung on something else are these sorry these skulls carved out of bone pretty cool 108 of them it's kind of long and um, I have Mother Lilith's sigil. Jinxie, what are you doing? Mother Lilith's sigil, um, kind of where the tassel would be to mark where the 108 happens. I use my prayer beads um, for mantras, for intentions, for enchantings, things like that. Um, chantings of any kind. It's a way to just give your hands something to do um, as you meditate and kind of gives you a goal as you meditate but just focus on each bead um, but you know some of us are goal oriented and prefer start by with the goal and then move on to the present that would be better um, yeah I I've used the I tend to wear them for protection all the time because they have Lilith's sigil, um, they're sacred to my relationship with her, and it's one of the ways I honor her. I've also honored Satan with these. I've also used these to contact demons when they're new to me, um, or even when they're not new to me. What else? Jinx, stop fucking with stuff. Give me a second. I don't think she's gonna stop so again prayer beads are not particularly um, necessary in Satanism or even that popular I just happen to use them I've used them in my practice prior to being a Satanist as with the veil as with the oils so I just use it now um, something else I wanted to talk about what was it Divination tools. Um, as I'm speaking with spirits, sometimes uh, I don't want to rely on just my mind or my heart or my clear audience. It's nice to have confirmation through tools, such as my pendulum, which can answer some simple questions. Sometimes I can end up channeling when I'm holding my pendulum. It's like a little gateway to that. Um, you know, with the black mirrors, um, I use them sort of as like astral portals. I know a lot of people are cringing at me even having them point at the camera, but I'm really not concerned, honestly. Um, <laughs> but I use them as portals and that's more of a visual experience when I use them. I wouldn't call it clairvoyant because I don't feel like I'm actually scrying on it I just feel like I'm traveling through it but I don't know um, I also use them as like ways to hold sigils or like little vessels and it's just like um, how I can leave offerings sometimes or do my invocations whatever it gives me something to focus on um, I don't rely on the sigils solely or ends or anything to call spirits, but I like them. 
I know a lot of people criticize them, but I like them. And I can talk about why they're not necessarily egregores some other time, but I don't need to do that right now. Um, I like circles. I don't even care where they come from. Well, I care a little bit, but... I like... This is maybe a more classic um, idea. Of course, mine has a little bit of a spin on it, but I do use blasphemy from time to time in my practice. This is an inverted um, crucifix. Now, what's cool about this crucifix is even upright, if you see who is there. Can you see? <laughs> it's not Jesus. So, either way, um, this crucifix is blasphemous, and I love that. So, blasphemy is um, kind of what Satanism is known for widely, even though I don't feel like that's fair. Um, blasphemy is a powerful way to break stigma around various taboos, um, to help break away from certain conditioning and programming that has been socialized into us either through religion, usually through religion, but sometimes through other means. Um, it's just a good way to shift your consciousness or force a shift in consciousness um, and provoke that in others around you. So you gotta be careful with blasphemy sometimes because you don't want to be um, placing your identity in that as Satanism is not meant to be reverse Christianity. Um, it's meant to be liberation from Christianity. So you can't be liberated from something that you are just inverting all the time. Um, so that is where you have to be careful with blasphemy, but blasphemy is a wonderful, powerful healing tool and it should be talked about more and I want to talk about blasphemy more at a later date. Um, popular tool is the Afame or ritual knife. I don't use mine very often, um, but, and I've also made my own that I also have, but I went out and bought this one a little over a year ago. Forgive her, she's stained. Well, it's a boy, but forgive him. He has shit on him, but, um, so I did use him, but I shouldn't gesture this at the camera. Uh, I don't use it super often because it's just such a um, direct tool. Like it's so direct that sometimes it's like, I don't really need that precision all the time. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar in various alternative religions and that practice magic, uh, especially those based in Western esotericism or that draw from hermetics uh, use athames or ritual knives to direct energy such as casting circles, um, drawing pentagrams in the air, or cutting away certain energies, directing energy, manipulating energy basically. Um, I feel like it's a very aggressive tool to do so and although it is very useful um, when that is necessary, I don't feel it's always necessary. And as someone who does not cast circles, I know some people are wailing at that, but I do not cast circles. Um, so I don't use the Athamate that often. That being said, it is a powerful tool sometimes to connect to Satan. Um, and I should use it again more for that because for some reason this tool, well, I know the reasons, but <laughs> this tool does connect me to his energy quickly. Um, very quickly. So, the Athame, for some reason, is very powerful with that. Again, I know the reason, but we're not, this is YouTube. I don't know how much, what I can and cannot say anymore. I don't even think I'm monetized, so I should be able to say everything, but I'm not sure. Um, Jinxie, be nice. I use crystals. I know that crystals are more of a new age thing, but I've used crystals for a long ass time in my craft and I'm not going to stop using crystals. 
Now, the way I use crystals is a little different than other people. Most people um, find a crystal that is for a particular thing and get crystals that are for a particular thing when it comes to magic. Kind of like how you would pick herbs. But for me, I let the individual crystal tell me what it's for. Um, for example, I'm holding this garnet here. And as soon as I laid eyes on this garnet, I knew that this was going to be um, holding Lilith's energy on the altar. This is going to be an offering to Lilith and also maintain Lilith's energy on the altar. Um, it has done so quite well. I could go into why I associate Garnet with Lilith, but I feel like most people who know Lilith and have felt Garnet understand why. You know, it's, it's just going to kind of click. It's not going to be a concrete crystal meaning equivalent. Crystal meanings are very, very recent, you know, and I have found crystals with the same mineral or the same type of crystal that felt extremely different, you know, so... I just let the crystal tell me what it wants to be used for. There's a smoke quartz. Where did I put it? Where did I put that? Oh, here it is. Um, this particular smoky quartz I like to use um, to calm down. And there's another one I like to use to store infernal and demonic energy in. Um, this is a, I forget that it has things in it, but this is a bowl carved out of silver moonstone, like dark moonstone. And that is an offering bowl to Mother Lilith. Um, they all hold significance, like this purple labradorite heart I have used for particular demons. Um, I find that I, it's like I hold the crystal and it tells me what it wants to do. And eventually I'll find a job for all my crystals. You know. Um, and those I never find a job where I end up giving away. It's interesting how certain deities seem to claim some crystals. Like for example, I got this crystal skull. And Belial has claimed it. Can't explain really how I know that. But like. Um, I do, and I can't explain the exact moment when, it just kind of became clear one day that this was now going to belong to Belial, so he sits on the altar and he belongs to Belial. So, you know, I'm not your typical crystal witch, at least I don't see myself that way, but I love crystals, I always have. Um, I am no longer allowing myself to buy any for a very long time because I need to give away some before I do or trade some or something. Um, make them into jewelry and sell them. I don't know. But I have way too many crystals right now. Um, so many that I don't even use. But they are nice to hold energy on the altar and um, they're just really nice to hold when you meditate. It's just really nice. I love stones. I'm just very much an earth person. Um, yes. Uh, with regards to divination, um, sometimes the pendulum is not clear and I feel like I need more clarification. So I often reach for my tarot or oracle cards, um, which I'm more fluent in and I feel like I can rely on better and I trust my skills with tarot the most out of all my skills. It's something I have the most experience in. Um, and these cards, these are the, um, Goetia of Shadows, I believe it's called. Where's the box? Got the Goetia of Shadows deck, uh, by Los Garbeo. I forget the guy who designed them. They're really beautiful, um, and I love using them. They're just fucking awesome. I feel like I get really clear messages using them. So, 
they've been my go-to. They've been on the altar the most. And I do keep, um, I don't know if I'll find it now. I'm getting a little off track, but I do keep the title card to represent Satan in it because it has like all the Goetia spirits plus Lilith and Lucifer. Um, but as someone who sometimes distinguishes between Satan and Lucifer and at other times meshes them together, it's complicated, okay? Um, I like to have a card specifically for Satan. So I kept that as well. Can't find it right now. But I also keep um, another pendulum, another crystal skull. Another deck of cards. Oh, my cauldron, of course. That's another witch thing, but I burn offerings in there. I burn um, paper petitions with sigils on them. Um, maybe I'm making a chaos magician. Sorry, chaos magic sigil. You know, the ones with intentions, sigil ma basic sigil magic, that's what I'm trying to say. Very stoned, sorry. Um, burn it in there. Those of you in the know, you know which spirit of mine takes care of what I burn in there. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, I, I love jewelry in my practice, obviously. Um, jewelry is like, basically... I like it because it's similar to tattoos. It's a way of making my body a physical altar. Same with the veil. It's like a way of carrying a piece of the altar with me or um, something tactile, something comforting. Even if it's just a psychological thing, I really, I appreciate having magical jewelry. I have like some hanging up above. This is another representation of Satan. It's a big pendant. Uh, I love wearing that one. I have jewelry all over Lilith's statue that represents Lilith with more jewelry to her here. Jewelry for Satan and Lucifer on Baphomet. There's rings on Satan's horns <laughs> here. I just keep... Jewelry is just really important to me. I think... I feel like jewelry can make you feel really beautiful and there's something kind of like sacred and ancestral about wearing jewelry. I don't know. Um, yeah, so that is a little summary of some of the tools I use in my practice. I'm probably forgetting something that I'll kick myself for later, but I thought that'd be interesting to share. Um, you know, I have some basic altar tools like the chalice. Uh, incense burner or whatever else but I wanted to share how things specifically work in my practice and I hope that was interesting thank you so much for all of the support and the interaction on my channel I apologize that I've really not been on social media much at all and I haven't even been watching everyone else's content or really even replying to anybody I've just been kind of liking stuff um, but I really do love reading comments and responding and or just thinking about what y'all said. So I appreciate every single person who is bothered to like, watch, subscribe, comment, share, whatever. Um, it means a lot to me and I, and I, I don't know what to do. I'm afraid of success, but <laughs> trying to get over that. And I truly am grateful for your support. Ave Satanis.